Hello and welcome to our shop tour. We are just so located in Northern Kentucky. We are a shop run by three different generations. So I'm the youngest, my name is Kelsey. I'm April, I'm the middle generation. And I'm the oldest, I'm Julie Seeley. <laughs> welcome to our shop. We opened in August of 2018. 18, yeah. 2018, so we've been here for a couple of years. We carry mostly Moda fabric, we are a baby lock dealer, and we do lots of fun stuff online on YouTube and on Facebook, so we can't wait to tell you guys more about what we do today. We're hoping that this video will um, help you whether you're just starting out quilting or if it's something you've been doing for a while. Maybe you're watching this by yourself, maybe you're watching this with a guild. Either way, we hope that you'll learn something new or be inspired by what we have to show you today. All right, so welcome to the front of the shop. I'm gonna show you around a little bit. So over here, we have some of our Baby Lock machines. We are a Baby Lock dealer. These are some of our favorites. I love the crescendo over here. This is amazing for quilters, whether you like to do quilting or applique or piecing. There's so many different uses on this. Um, we also have on display over here the Sashiko, which is the Japanese stitch that looks like a, a hand quilting stitch. And then we have the Altair, which is a um, combination sewing and embroidery machine. And then we have the Jazz 2, which is just a basic sewing machine, but it's amazing for quilting because it has this 12 inch neck space. So this is a favorite for sure. You'll also notice that we have some honey buns over here, which are a cute pre-cut. These are one and a half inch strips. They come on a roll. They might look like a jelly roll to you, but they are different dimensions one and a half inch versus two and a half inches. You'll also notice all of our bags waiting to be picked up. So we do lots of online orders, especially on our Facebook show and on our website. And so when you place an online order, you can either pick it up if you're local or we'll ship it to you for $5. Then up here we have some really cute quilts. This one is Quilter's Cottage designed by Lori Holt um, using some of our favorite Moda fabric. But one other thing about this quilt is that it is a block of the month subscription. So one of our favorite things to do is block of the month subscriptions. We have bench pillow of the months, we have block of the months, and we have pre-cut of the months. And so if you're interested in seeing what subscriptions we currently have available, you can go over to our website. It's justsostudio.com. Click on the little subscriptions tab and you'll be able to see everything that's available. This one still, it's this one has started as of February that we're filming this, 2021. Um, this one has started, but you can sign up late for it if it's something that you're interested in. And then we'll go over here. We have all of our pretty fabric, more fabric. And then this is um, some of our fat quarters. We normally put our fat quarters with the collection, but some of them are over here. Our fat quarters are buy th uh, $3 each, buy six, get the seventh free. And if you're not familiar with the term fat quarter, a fat quarter is just a quarter yard of fabric, but it's cut a bit differently. Um, so it's 18 by 22 inches instead of nine by 45 inches. So they come in handy for lots of little projects and lots of patterns we will specifically call for fat quarters. And then up here we have some of our jelly rolls. They're not all on display, but these are some of them. Jelly rolls are a pre-cut as well. And so what a jelly roll is, is it is a roll of two and a half inch by 45 inch strips. And you'll get at least one print from every single fabric in the collection. And these are designed by Moda as well. Um, lots of patterns also will specifically call for jelly rolls for two and a half inch strips. However, if you don't have a jelly roll on hand or if you want to use a jelly roll pattern with fabric that you already have, one of our favorite tools to use for that would be a strip cutter. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you a sh uh, strip cutter called the Shape Cut Pro. And this is really a handy device because with this you can cut you know, jelly roll strips, mini charms, charms, layer cakes, and bindings. So it's very handy. It has uh, slits that are cut every two and a half inches. So you can make two and a half inch, five inch, seven and a half, ten inch, whatever multiples of that you want. It's 23 inches wide, so as you lay it on a piece um, of yardage, it will stretch from selvage to selvage, and you'll be able to make your cut across. What I like to do is lay it on, uh, oh, about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric, and just do a clean cut across the edge to be sure I'm starting. So I put my um, cutter into this little keyhole shape here, and then I just roll it across in that slot. And I'll show you how that piece comes out, see? So then I uh, can continue cutting. I'm going to go to the two and a half inch mark because I want to make some binding. 
If I were making a charm, I would go on over to the five inch mark. Or a layer cake, I would go clear to the 10 inch mark. So at the two and a half inch mark, I put the blade into the keyhole shape. And just proceed across the fabric. And just like that, I've cut my strips. As a matter of fact, when I have cut four of these, I have enough binding for um, crib size throw. So that's how quickly you can prepare your bindings using this cutter. In addition to the shape cut, we carry the stripology uh, rulers, which are the same idea. They have slots for you to line up your cutting. This one is the stripology square, which is 12 by 12. And then this one is the uh, extra large, and it's 13 by 20. And in addition to these rulers, we have these patterns that are designed specifically to use shapes that have been cut with the stripology rulers. Uh, and these are also um, divided in one half inch increments, so you can just select what size you want within the uh, one half inch. Over in this corner of our shop, we have a lot of our patterns. We organize them based on pre-cut. So we have some charm pack patterns. We have some flat quarter patterns, jelly roll, honey bun. And then over here, we have some layer cake patterns and some fat eighth patterns. Um, this is our, we have a lot of our uh, layer cakes over here. So these are the 10 inch squares by Moda. They're by collection, um, just like the jelly rolls or the charm packs. There are 42 pieces per pack. And we love these because it's a way that you can enjoy a whole entire collection without buying a bunch of fabric off of all the bolts. Um, so you can make a really pretty coordinated quilt out of a layer cake. Um, it's one of our favorite pre-cuts to use, so we have a lot of samples to show you of different ways that you can use um, layer cakes, different looks that you can get. Some of them are super quick and easy and some of them take a little bit longer. So this one is just a, an example of this used a white layer cake along with a patterned layer cake. And um, this is just one design that we, it's in a book that we have called Easy Layer Cake 2. Okay, and then this one is from an actual pattern called Picnic Patch. And this is a great um, kind of like starter quilt because you're um, not even cutting some of the 10 inch squares and some of the, and then some of them you are. So you can see how for a beginner there's not, it's not a very complicated pattern, but it still comes across with a very cute design. And then this one is a little more complicated. <laughs> I made this one. It has some um, inset triangles and such. This is called Picket. See if you can see the picket fence. Okay, so this one is a way to really show off a layer cake that has some very bold, large designs in it because you don't cut very much um, out of the actual 10 inch piece. So there's just lots of different things you can do with layer cakes. And then one of our favorite things to do is use cake mixes. So now I'm gonna show you what to do with these cake mixes. If you're like me, you see them and they're black and white and they're kind of boring and you're not sure what to do with them, all the cake mixes have a number. This is number one, it goes one through 10. And today I'm gonna to show you specifically number three, four, and five, it's just some different samples of what it can look like finished, okay? So what a cake mix is, is it's a pad of pa pre-printed papers that say that five times fast, that has dotted lines and solid lines on it. And um, the majority of the time what you're using them for is to create half square triangles. And of a few of them, like the number five and the number eight also have four patches in them. So if you have a project where you have to make a bunch of half square triangles, you might consider a cake mix. Um, they yield different sizes is what they do. And so you would look at um, which cake mix yields which um, finished, which size for a finished half square triangle, okay? So what you do with a cake mix is 
you have a layer cake, a beautiful printed, coordinated, this, a layer cake that are 10 inch squares from one collection with all the different um, prints from that collection, 42 squares in a layer cake. And then there's also solid layer cakes. Plain old boring white or cream, depending on which one goes better with here. There's different shades. Um, you have one of each of these and then you have a cake mix. Okay, and what you do with these is you layer together a printed layer cake piece, a solid layer cake piece, and you rip off one of your um, cake mix papers and pin it together on top. I like to use these tiny little applique pins. They're very short, they're this tall, and they uh, I pin in between where all the different triangles are. After you've pinned all the layers together, you look for the star where it says start. Each of them has a star. This is the number three. This yields two inch by two inch finished half triangle squares, okay? Then um, this one I went ahead and sewn together ahead of time. This is the number four, and it can yield two different sizes. So you can decide if you want three, three and three quarter inch triangle or four inch finished triangles on this one. And you just find that star and you follow the arrows when you're sewing. Here's the back, it shows you what it looks like at the end after you sew. Then we're gonna cut on the solid lines all the way around, in between, diagonally. Then we end up with these really cool triangles. And you're gonna rip the paper. What I like to do is hold my thumb here on the dot and then rip the paper off. And then you can open up the triangle and the square and there you go. Isn't that amazing? And then we're gonna bring it over here to the ironing, the iron mat, and we're just gonna iron it open. The quilt behind me is the number four. And you can see that one of their ideas, they give you different ideas at the bottom. One of their ideas was a chevron. And I didn't really like that design with the chevron. I just like the uh, kind of up and down. So I put together, those are all different half square triangles arranged a different way and put, to, put them together that way. And they go together really fast and it's amazing. Um, I have a couple different other samples to show you really quickly. This is, um, a bigger square put together using multiple uh, sheets from the number three layer cake or cake mix. Okay, so you have this cake mix, and it shows you different uh, possibilities of layouts. And there's lots of different books that give you other layouts that you can use. So that's one idea for the number three. And then for the number five, this is one that does include some squares, so it gives you some four patches in there. The big one. This was just one cake mix. One layer cake, one solid layer cake, and one cake mix. Okay, just to give you an idea of the finished size of these things. So that gives you another idea. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this quick little demo of how to use a cake mix. We actually have a, a full tutorial of how to do a cake mix from start to finish. We are going to provide the link in the description below. All right, over here we have some more gorgeous fabric. You'll notice that with some collections, we're able to have um, all the pre-cuts and we also make lots of kits out of them. Um, so over here, this is called Cider. This is one of our newer collections. Um, we have a great big kit here um, for the Summer Moon book, but we also have other smaller um, kits for random little patterns that come with the collection. Um, all right, and then over here we have our batting. We have pillow forms because sometimes we'll promote books and classes and stuff that have that use pillows. Um, one of our subscriptions has been a bench pillow of the month club, so we like would sell the bench pillow form and things like that. And then you'll also notice more of our sewing machines over here. So these are more of our beginner machines. So whether you're advanced or beginner, Baby Lock has some great sewing machine options. Um, we have the Zest, the Joy, the Jubilant, and the Brilliant. And usually if you're 
you're just starting out, my recommendation is a Jubilant or a Brilliant. And then if you're a little bit more advanced in quilting, you have a bit more of an opinion on the types of features that you want, I might recommend something more like the Soprano or even the Crescendo. All right, I wanted to show you guys two of my favorite features here on the Baby Lock Crescendo. This is an amazing machine for quilters, and one of the biggest reasons for that is the digital dual feed foot right here. So this is a little bit of an extreme walking foot. Um, it does plug into the back of the machine. There's a cord back here, it plugs in. Um, you can get different soles, they're called soles here, um, which are the, the feet of the digital dual feed foot. Um, and then the biggest advantage of this is for quilting, especially when you have lots of layers. So I'm going to demo to you guys real quick how many layers um, this can handle. Um, so here I have two pieces of fabric with some batting in the middle. Um, I'm going to lower this presser foot here and I'm just going to sew. Okay, so that's um, normally the amount of layers that you'd be quilting with a normal quilt. Um, handled it really well. I'm gonna fold it over real quick, so kind of double up on that. All right, so that was double the amount of layers. And I'm going to double it up one more time. And I just want you to um, notice how evenly this is feeding it, even though there are a ton of layers under here right now. Um, there is like a little belt right here that is feeding the fabric through. I'll show you guys a close up in just a second. But there's a little belt right here that's feeding it through on the top, similar to a walking foot. And then we have, obviously, our, our um, feed dogs underneath. Okay, so here is my stitching. Looks amazing on both front and back. all of these layers of fabric and batting. To remove this foot, all you need to do is unplug it from the back here and then loosen this screw right here and it comes off nice and easy. And then we can put our normal ankle back on the um, shank here. And there we go. And then this is the regular ankle that comes on the machine and it, it does have the snap on feet. So those are really easy to interchange as well. All right, um, this last thing I would like to demonstrate for you guys real quick is the use of the sensor pen. This pen plugs into the side of the machine. It has lots of different uses, but the one I want to demo to you guys today is how you might use it when appliquing or using a decorative stitch. So here I have my fabric and then I have a star that I'm going to applique on top of it. So first let's take a look at my screen over here. Um, I'm going to choose a blanket stitch right here that we can use to applique. So I have that selected. And then I would also like my laser guide to show. So I'll show you guys what that is in a second. But I want my laser beam to be right over the straight side of my blanket stitch. So there we go, I have my laser guide lined up here. And then I'm gonna head over here to my sensor pen. And um, you can see that we have a couple different uses for the sensor pen. This is the one I'm going to show you guys today. Um, and this is to um, signify an end point of a particular 
um, design. And so what this is going to do is I can register my start point of where I want it to stitch and then my end point. Um, and I'm going to demo that to you guys over on the actual star that I'm appliquing. But I can choose where I want it to start and where I want it to stop using the sensor pen. Alright, so with that screen up over here it's telling me touch the ending point using the sensor pen. So I want it to end right here at the tip of my star. Actually, because it's a blanket stitch, I want it to end a little bit before the tip of my star. So I'm just going to press this point here. And then I'm going to hit OK on my screen. And now I can sew. And my foot is still on the pedal right now and it stopped sewing all by itself right where I indicated with my sensor pen. So, so I'll show you guys that one more time. Say I wanted to do the other side of this point, I can go ahead and mirror image the same exact stitch. What I'm doing with my laser guide is um, because over on the screen I lined up my laser guide to be the straight edge of the blanket stitch, I know that I want my laser beam to be along the edge of what I'm appliquing. Um, so I have my laser beam lined up here. And then I'm going to indicate the end point again. And I'm going to start sewing. And there we have it. As you can see, my stitches ended just short of the point like I indicated with my sensor pen. Um, you can do that with a lot of the decorative stitches on this machine, so if you're doing any applique or decorative stitching of any kind where you want it to complete the full picture of the design, for instance if you were doing a heart, you could indicate if you want it to finish the heart or if you want it to stop halfway through a heart design. Stuff like that that makes this machine super customizable to whatever you're working with. Over here we have our notions nook. Um, starting off with some embroidery kits. We love these little embroidery kits that we import from Israel. They have the whole entire, everything that you need to make the project on the front. It has a pre-printed panel, all the embroidery floss, and then you do need to buy the hoop if you want a hoop separately. So those are really fun. Lots of different ones of those. Um, we have your general notions such as needles, um, hand needles, machine needles, binding needles. We have um, one of our popular um, Frixion pens that you can write on fabric and then it irons off. We have pre-wound bobbins. We have a tabletop seam ripper. This is amazing. When I discovered this, it suction cups to the table and then you can rip a whole long seam. Um, we have some wash away tape for zippers, uh, machine needles, glue pens, Misty Fuse, which is a popular um, interfacing with if you're doing landscape quilting. We have one of our top sellers is our wool mats. We have two different sizes. These are great and we sell them oftentimes in conjunction with this um, little travel iron here. They're great to have just sitting next to your machine. You can have your own personal ironing spot if you're doing a project that has a lot of ironing in between um, seams. We have fun little things like um, stickers, the um, handy stickers by Lori Holt where you can, a lot of patterns will have different parts labeled with a letter, so A, B, C, D, E, and these you can just peel off and stick onto that um, particular piece that you had just cut. We have different kinds of rotary cutters depending on what kind you like. We have refill blades. And then over here we have some fun, some zippers. We have 22 inch, seven inch, nine inch. And then we also have these really fun lacy zippers to kind of spice up the project you might be working on. Um, we have snaps, wonder clips, um, textile glue, measuring tapes, um, cork. It's kind of a fun different notion that some people like to make the um, base for bags, things like that. So we have lots of different, um, this is like our main notion section, but then over here we have our thread. So we have dual duty, which is um, 
polyester thread 250 yards. Over here we have Aurifil, which is Egyptian cotton, and it is 50 weight. We have smaller spools that have um, 200 meters on them um, that has a variety of colors. And then over here we have some of the basic colors that get used a lot. We have some gray, white, cream, navy, and black in bigger spools. This is 1,400 meters. We have some um, bottom line superior, and we have some king tut variegated. So we have a little bit of a variety in our thread. A little note about thread. The higher the number in the weight, then the thinner the thread is. So the bottom line is 60 weight, so that means it's thinner than um, the 50 weight cotton. All right, so some more fun pre-cuts are these charm packs. Charm packs are five inch square. So the layer cakes were 10 inch, these are five inch, so they're half the size, but they're also 42 pieces, just like all of our other pre-cuts. Some fun stuff that you can do with charm packs is not only is it a great beginner um, pre-cut just because you can sew them all together into like a patchwork quilt, um, just for practice. I've done that with some kids before. That's a good um, thing to do with kids who are just learning how to sew. Um, but you can also use cupcake mixes, which we showed you the cake mix, and that's the 10 inch version. But there's also a 5 inch version that pairs with the cupcake mixes, which are the little papers um, that help you make half square triangles. So some quilts that we've made with that are this one up on that wall, kind of in a star design. And then I also have this one here that also uses a charm pack, a solid charm pack, and a cupcake mix. So those are fun. And then we also have mini charms down here, which are two and a half inch pre-cuts. All right, and then moving over here, we have our ruler wall. So we mostly carry Creative Grid rulers. Every now and then, if there's a size that Creative Grid doesn't carry, we'll get it in another brand. But Creative Grid is our favorite because the back side of it has um, texture to it that allows it to not slip around on fabric when you're cutting, which is amazing. Um, one of my favorite rulers is a block lock ruler. Uh, this is not Creative Grid, so the block lock ruler has a ditch down the diagonal, which helps it click into the seam of a half square triangle, and it makes it really, really easy to trim up and true a half square triangle, especially if you were to pair this with a rotating cutting mat. It makes that whole process a lot more seamless, a lot easier, a lot less headache. And then moving over here, we have some more fabric. We have some interfacing, we've got some kits, and then here is um, some of our books. So this isn't all of our books, but these are our most popular ones. Um, we love Martingale and Moda books, those are our favorite. We also carry It's So Emma, um, some of the Fat Quarter Shop books, and then some of the Lori Holt, Lori Holt by It's So Emma as well. And we're always putting new fabric on clearance as well. So most of the fabric that we carry is Moda fabric. We have some art gallery fabric and some Camelot fabric for some of our licensed Disney prints. Um, but these are all really high quality Moda quilt and cotton. They're just a little bit out of date, so we'll move them over here to our clearance section so you can always find more budget-friendly ways to quilt as well. And then moving into the back, we have our back studio room. So in the past, when we first opened, this was our classroom. But in the past year, it has transformed into a filming studio because we do a lot more video stuff than we used to, especially on our live Facebook show. So why don't you tell them a little bit about that? Yes. So every Wednesday at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we put together a show for all of our quilters out there. And um, it's become something really fun. We've mm -hmm. been doing it every week. We started it during um, the quarantine. <laughs> and uh, so we've been doing it every week since April, April of last year. 2020. Yeah. So almost a full year. So throughout the week we're planning and coming up with fun new um, bundles and kits and things like that for you all. And then we present it to you at the Wednesday live. And there's always discounts. We have a wheel of fabric, we call it which is um, this, and it has different percentages off, and we have different segments of our show, like pre-cuts and fat quarter bundles, and notions, notions yardage, yardage. and before every segment, we spin the wheel to see what the percentage off is going to be for that segment. So it's very fun, and um, we have a trivia question, we have a giveaway for that. We have three to four giveaways each week as well, and so our first one is if you share our posts, 
then you'll be entered into the sharing giveaway, which we do at the beginning of the live. And the winner of that, we will spin this to see what they win. And then we have a trivia giveaway, which is a little prize, little fun trivia game in the middle. And then you have a chance to win a gift card if you purchase something during the live. And then our fourth giveaway that we sometimes do is every week we have a new viewership goal. And if we reach our viewership goal, which is the number of people currently watching the live, we'll do a second sharing giveaway because this is our highest value giveaway we do. It's valued up to $100. Um, so you get lots of free stuff or some gift cards. So great stuff on here that you have a chance of winning as well. Yes. We hope you've enjoyed the tour around our shop, Just So, located in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. All the links to everything we talked about today are in the description below. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, and have a great day.